All right, how's it going? Um, just give me one second, just getting set up real quick. And then we shall waste some time building some stuff. Right. Uh, uh, so I plan to um. <clears throat> I just kind of woke up, so let's hopefully my mind's gonna wake up soon. I plan to build out another little web socket game on stream. Again, nothing too too crazy. Just wanted to start from like a bare bones project and see like what we can build, and maybe address some of the issues that we saw on the last stream, where like someone was connecting over and over again and like causing the entire server to crash. And then probably also address more like realistic scenarios for running the web server and not allowing people to hack it. But welcome to the stream, everyone, everyone trickling in. Um, so last stream, I wasn't using Canvas. Uh, how do I, Muhammad asked, how do I do the screen switch smoothly? Uh, I turned off the animations in the Mac so that it's just a quick uh, transition, I guess you can say. <clears throat> Good morning, Rohan. What's going on? So I might do a side scroller and just do some gravity and stuff like that. We'll see how fun that is. But you'll notice that I have a canvas here. In the last stream, we were not using a canvas. We were just rendering stuff directly to the page. Um, in this example, I'm going to go ahead and remove some margin from the body. <clears throat> so we got a canvas and we have a little red square drawn to the canvas. Let's look at how this is working because a lot of this code I grabbed from an online blog post because that's what developers do. They copy code they see on blog posts and that's how they get started. So we got a, a loop here. And this is typically how like a game loop might kind of work where you have a loop which updates everything on the page and then it draws everything on the page. And then we are using the request animation frame, which basically every time the browser tries to draw, it'll call this method. It'll run this loop and then it'll call this method again. So it just tries to do this process as fast as possible over and over again. Um, and the draw method basically clears everything on the, the canvas. <clears throat> and draws out a square. Um, Harmit asks, where would I host this? I'm going to host on Railway again today. Someone asked, uh, Abdel Hakwing, I don't know how to pronounce that. How would you use this in prod project instead of Socket.io? I would use like a real socket service provider such as Amazon's API gateway. Uh, I think it's called like V2 and they have like web sockets you can use there. Um, and that's what we actually do in my work project. We use a AWS API gateway web sockets. But yeah, I wouldn't, unless you're like having like bare metal machines or VMs and you're hosting your own express application, what I do at work is we do a bunch of serverless stuff and I would probably opt for using a pre-existing service and just pay them money because you don't want to have to manage this stuff by hand. Um, but if you don't have the money, then I guess you got to do it by hand. <clears throat> I mean, they give you like, uh, Railway gives you like 21 days free. So if you want more free, like if you want more uptime, just use your credit card. I don't know where you'd host something for free. Honestly, I don't think these companies should give you stuff for free. Like it costs money to run servers and it makes sense that they charge you to run these servers. So I don't know where you'd want to go to get a free server hosting thing. Um, but you should probably just pay money to have a server hosted if that's what your end goal is. Um, let's go ahead and see the server side of things. So we have an express app. We load in socket.io. Um, we will run this on port 3000. We host everything in this public folder. So that's where this index HTML is being 
hosted. And then when someone connects to the server, we print out a connect message. And when they disconnect, we print out a disconnect message. So that's all we're doing. And I wanted to try to build like a 2D side scroller in the stream that everyone could connect to and just jump around and maybe make some type of simple goal that we can all do. Like, I don't know, collect coins or everyone has to blow, blow up each other. So how do I do that? So when I connect to my, my socket server, I have a player who's this. And I probably need to get a board. So like a, what usually makes sense is using like a, a board or a map. I'll call it a map. And this could be a 2D array for right now. Um, I don't know if 2D array makes the most sense, but I'll just say new array. And let's just go ahead and make it like 20. Like this. And then we're going to go ahead and map over that. And then we're going to say... For every entry, we'll say new array, 20 by 20. Okay, so we have a 20 by 20 grid. Just go ahead and console log that so we know what we're dealing with. And notice here we have a bunch of undefined things here. Okay. So it would make sense to um, actually store maybe like an enum or some type of like string that represents what this, this grid location is. So I'll go ahead and say like tile types. Um, and I might just go ahead and do like strings. I know this isn't the most performant thing. Again, I don't really do the most performant, most like memory efficient thing. I usually just do the thing that makes the most sense, especially since I'm explaining concepts to beginners. So like this could just be called a block. <laughs> and that could be equal to... <clears throat> Actually, what do I want to do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill some of these with blocks. You know, now that I think about this, this doesn't even make sense. I want to be able to like see this array. So let's just do something like this. And we're going to go ahead and just do this for a little bit. So a 10 by 10 array. Let's see if we can kind of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to do this old school, and we're going to basically do something like this. <clears throat> um, so let's just try to render a couple blocks on the page. I'll just do like a block as a one. And at some point, this will get too confusing, and we have to like actually get like a real tile editor to be able to manage this. But if we can just do something like this and have that displayed on the page, I think that would be cool. So instead of having this... Um, Instead of having this like um, coded on the front end as well, I'm just going to have the server send this map over. So like the server can be in control of like owning the map and what the map looks like. And the client just needs to know like what images that it doesn't need to render for every block location. Um, and then we could also like maybe send over the grid size. We'll just do like 32 by 32. But when you connect, let's make a function to send over the map to the back end. So I'll just say the const send map and that'll take in a socket, and then that's it. So we'll just go ahead and like let this equal a function. What am I doing here? I'll do this. And we're going to say socket.emit map, and then we're going to send over the map. So when a person connects, just send over the map. Does that make sense? Someone connected, send them the entire map, um, and that should be good enough. So if we go to the front end and go to the network tab, Let's make sure this works. I'm going to go ahead and just refresh the page. We should get our transport here. Uh, and we can look at one of these. Which one do we want to look at? Uh, I don't even know. Probably makes sense if I went to the WebSocket one. So <clears throat> in your browser, there's a WebSocket tab. Click on that. Then click on your transport. Click on Messages. And if I were to look at Messages, um, I might have missed it. Let me try it again. I thought I'd be getting over the map. Did I not refresh the page or something? Hold on. Then map, socket, socket, emit, map, map. Uh, 
let's try this again. Okay, I don't know why I'm not getting the map here, but I bet you if I just console logged it, it would show up. Assignment to a constant variable. Oh, I actually have a an error. That's why it's not working, I think. So this time rendered obviously needs to be a let because I'm reassigning it every time. Let's go ahead and try it again and see if we can get back that WebSocket event. Still not getting it. I don't know. Who cares? Let's just go and somewhere in here. What we're going to do is we're going to start binding to the socket. So on line 21 here, you see that we're creating a socket connection. And this is going to connect by default to like an endpoint locally. So I can say socket.on. And this is how you bind event listeners. And I can say listen for that map event and call a function when that map event comes in. And this is going to be the map event here. And let's just go ahead and like store the map. And make sure I call this like something else. Now let's think about what we want to do. So storing the map's great, but we also want to like um, draw it to the page, right? So I want to make sure if I were the console log map here, this shows up in the front end. Let's go to the console and uh, cannot access map before initialized. Why would that be? Oh, what am I doing here? Map is equal to an empty. I'm just gonna let this be an empty array with an array inside of it, okay? So we're gonna do a 2D looping for uh, the draw method on this map, but I'm gonna set it equal to a 2D array that's just empty so that nothing really happens. Let's try it again. Okay, so there we go. The front end got the map and we see that all this stuff is being displayed here. Yeah, so everyone who's joining, I'm trying to just make a simple 2D game, a side scroller where people can all connect who's watching the stream, kind of like I did last stream. Um, so you should be able to see us all jumping around on this screen together when I get this deployed in a second. And it's going to be a side scroller. So there's going to be like tiles that you can rest on and jump on. And that's a, I don't know how much, how much more we're going to do about that, depending on how much time I have. But the main takeaway is just kind of get you exposed to WebSockets, get you exposed to building something with vanilla JS. All right, so to recap, we have the server that defines a map. When you join, we send that map over to the client one time. Then the client receives that map event. We console log it. We verify that, hey, this is actually working, so we're good. And then we need to draw it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and see if we can figure, how, figure out how to draw that. I would just probably do um, a 2D loop. Um, so let's do like a let i equals zero, i less than map dot length, i plus plus. And typically we we do i and j, but you can also call this row and column if that makes more sense to you all. So let's do a row and a column, like so. And we're gonna go ahead and just draw out a let's do a black square for every time that we get an entry in the map. Let me go ahead and do this. Every time we get an entry in the map, that is a one. Okay. So I think there's a way to set the color. CTX fill dial might be, I might have to go Google this. I don't really know off the top of my head a lot of this stuff. That could be wrong, but I think you can set the fill style here. And then every time you fill a rack, notice the keyword fill here. These things will just draw black rectangles. And then we should probably also keep track of the tile size, which maybe the back end should be in control of that. I don't know. Let's just say like tile size is 32, make it a const. And then we could just make it uh, 32 by 32. Okay, so the four arguments for this function is x, y, width, and height. And then if we basically, while we're looping over this map, we could just say row times tile size. And actually I need to swap these. So this is X, which means that needs to be column. And this is Y, so this needs to be row. Y'all confused yet? So if I go back to the, the page, it doesn't work because I forgot to say only do this if um, map of row and column. In fact, let me just go ahead and say like tile number is equal to map of row 
column tile number I don't like. I'll say tile type. So if tile type is equal to zero, or say if, if it's equal to one, then we will draw that. How's it going, Donnie? Yeah, I just I decided to do last stream on last Sunday. I did like a WebSocket game and it was actually a lot of fun and people seem to enjoy it. So I'm just gonna do it again. I just need a break from the everyday like React web de web dev stuff. It just gets boring, I'll be honest. It's just a lot of like make a form that submits data, make a page that loads data, display the data. It's just over and over again. Just need something different. All right, so if you notice, we have like a little underscore, a, a little a U, which if you remember on the back end, here's the U. We got that little U there. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I decided to, uh, I'll, sh I'll shave my face like two days ago and I, I left my mustache just as a joke for my wife. And she's like, you should keep the mustache. I'm like, okay. But now I just look like I'm copying Primogen. So that's the downfall of that. But Mo, no, what's it called? Movember is coming up. So, you know, maybe I'll just keep it for the month of November and see. Um, so that's cool, but we need to actually make the, Hold on, I'm reading through the chat comments. I know a lot of people share the chat comments. Maybe I should do that real quick. Let me pop this out. Let's do this. Can I can I drag this over here? Maybe I can't. Let's do that. Go ahead and pin this. I don't know if I missed any questions. Okay, hosting. Yeah, I did that one real way as a newcomer. Gario IO. Yeah, is that the one with like the little circles and you go and like eat other circles and stuff? Uh, Ryan Short, 56. Just decided to go back to school for software engineering at the age of 27. Really enjoying your content. It's helpful for me. L helpful. It's, oh my gosh, I can't even read. Enjoying your content, it's helped me loads trying to learn. Yeah, well, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are. I'm glad, Ryan, you're going back to school. Um, never too late to go and learn more things. Software engineering is always fun to learn. So good luck in your, your schooling, and I hope you graduate and get a job with a very little effort. I hear it's kind of hard to get a job sometimes. Okay, so gravity. We need to, like, have this thing drop, right? So here's the problem. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted. I need to load up my live chat on another screen as well so that I can actually see them come in on my other monitor. But then I want to keep it here. When I zoom in, it zooms on both monitors. That's stupid. Anyway. Okay, so how do we do gravity? So in the server, like most of the logic of the game has to happen in the server or else your clients will hack at your your logic and your your game so we also need to have some type of like game loop on the back end now the one way you can do this is obviously with like a set interval um so i'm gonna go ahead and just do another function here called const loop is a function and we're gonna go ahead and do something similar like we did on the front end i'm gonna say set interval well, i guess this isn't really sim similar this is something completely different but I'm going to say 1,000 divided by 30. So that'll give us 30 frames per second, or 30, um, 30 server ticks a second, right? If, you, this, if this is too high, if you do like 20 or 10, you'll, you'll notice a bunch of, um, what's it called, like lag, lagginess. Um, so let's just go ahead and call loop at 30 ticks per second, and let's see how this works. And then every tick, what we want to do is when you join the server, you want to keep track of the player who joined and maybe make a player object. You can use like uh, object oriented programming if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and say const players is equal to an array. Um, someone's asking, is Angular dead? I don't think Angular is dead. I just don't think it's as popular as React. Um, so I would go and look at like indeed.com and look at jobs and see if you 
look at how many Angular jobs there are. Typically at larger enterprises, they're probably going to be using Angular. Um, yeah, I would just do that first before you convince yourself to like learn it or not. But honestly, I don't know. I've been having like some type of frustrations with React recently where I'm literally about to switch over to something else. I'm just tired of using React. I've been, I've been doing that work for a while. I've been doing it on my YouTube channel. I'd rather just use Svelte at this point. It's just React is just too convoluted. But let me get off, uh, let me stop complaining. So we got a players array. And every time you connect, we want to go ahead and say like players.push. We can make a new player object that could have an X of 100, Y of 100. Now, since we're doing gravity, we probably, yeah, view is cool too. I like view. Um, I might use view, but I, I like Svelte the best. I, th I think it's like the most straightforward and simplistic. So I'm going to probably just do Svelte and Svelte kit if I do do that. I don't know how changing content on my YouTube is going to work out. I probably lose like half of all my views. So the, the VX, so this is like velocity and um, velocity X and velocity Y. So we have a player, but gravity has to like make it drop at a certain velocity and you have to increase that with acceleration. So you kind of have to know a little bit about physics and luckily in school, they did teach me a little bit about physics of how like projectiles work and stuff. So, what you need to do is in the, the update loop, I'll just call it tick. We're going to say for player of players. And I'm going to try to just go slow and steady on this stream because I tend to like get ahead of myself when my coffee that I drink kicks in and then I start making a ton of mistakes. So just loop over the players and then we want to keep on updating their velocity, right? So I'm going to say player.vx plus equals um, I'm sorry, VY. So gravity acts in the Y direction and you want to keep on adding some constant to it. So like 1.0 or something. Now, one thing I've realized is that we probably need a delta. So let me go ahead and undo this. I'm going to say last update is equal to date.now. Or you could also do performance.now, but I have to import the performance utils. I'll just do date.now, who cares? And then we're going to say... Um, tick date.now minus last update. And then this could be a delta. So every time ticks called, we need to know how much time has elapsed since that last update so we can move the player at a constant velocity because if the server starts slowing down a little bit or if there's discrepancies between like the, the tick rate, you'll see like your player, you know, jump around or go faster in some ticks. Um, so this could be like a gravity constant. So let's go to the, co the top and say like gravity uh, VY. Well, gravity is not a velocity. Gravity is an acceleration. So I'll say like acceleration. Yeah, whatever, I'll just say gravity. Let's see how this works. So if we keep it at a constant one and go ahead and times that by delta. I think that'd be fine. So every tick update the velocity of the player. And then we're going to just say player.y is equal to player.y plus player.vy. Typically, you could just do that. Um, and that should make my player just continuously drop. So let's, let's see what happens. Now, nothing will happen in the front end because I didn't add any type of emit, right? How, does, how do the clients know that your player is updating? They don't. So you have to go ahead and do a io.emit. And we need to tell every person who's in the channel where the players are. So I'm going to go ahead and just publish the players every server tick. Now, again, this isn't like the most performant way. And then doing WebSockets with sending JSON is not performant either. JSON is a lot of extra boilerplate, which makes your payloads pretty big. If you wanted to make a real game, you'd have to use like lower level like byte buffers and generate your own like schema for knowing like what the event is and stuff if you wanted to really save up on bandwidth but we're just having fun building a game right we're not building crisis or far cry we're just making a little silly game so we're emitting players every server tick to every single person who's in the server but we don't do anything with that so let's go ahead and go to socket 
this is like where we're doing the events. We'll do soccer.on and when we get a player's event, I'll say server players. And we're going to keep track of that. Where is, I'll say let players is equal to an empty array. And then I'll say players is equal to server players. With an S, make sure you double check your code since we're writing JavaScript and not TypeScript. Now, one reason I'm not using TypeScript is like, it was taking me a lot of extra time to like get this all set up with TypeScript and I just gave up. So I said, screw it, I'm doing JavaScript. And I think JavaScript is good for beginners too because most people are learning JavaScript. And a lot of people who watch my videos are beginners. Uh, try message pack. Binary RPC. Yeah, I mean, there's like, what I was trying to get at is there's better solutions for making smaller payloads over the wire so that we're not flooding you with tons of kilobytes of data. Instead, you're sending like bytes of data that would really reduce the the bandwidth of your game because when you have a bunch of players you know you start timesing your bandwidth by 10 20 players it really starts eating up your bandwidth and slowing down your server um what am i doing okay so we get the players event and we store that players are right here so the next step is like we got to render those players right someone asks or it's just is uh, why is a map set to empty array with an empty array? So I did this um, so that this for loop doesn't crash, right? So I'm trying to loop over this double array, this 2D array. And if this map was not defined, then I'd have to go and say like if map, and then I have to wrap all this stuff. And that's just a bunch of extra stuff. So I'd rather just set it equal to like an empty array so that my loop doesn't crash when map isn't defined yet. Same thing with players, like I want to set it equal to an empty array because there's no players when the game first loads and I still want to be able to loop over it. So I'm going to go ahead and say for let player of players. And um, I'm also, keep in mind, I'm doing this after the map is drawn because if you were to try to do this before, your player could potentially be behind the black tiles. The order of how you draw stuff is important because the first thing you draw, it's like, imagine like it's like a back rendering canvas. So like you draw, you know, in the Z direction first and then you start drawing on top. Very similar to like Z index of uh, uh, the browser, right? So let's just go ahead and draw this. How do I do that? Let's just go ahead and do this. And we're gonna make the players uh, yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change the fill style to red, green, blue. How do you do yellow again? Isn't it like, Red and blue. I don't know my primary colors. There we go. So the players can be um, this color. Now the player size, we should probably change that up here. I'm gonna make a constant called like const player size is equal to 16. Let's make them half the size of the tiles. And I'm going to go ahead and render out a 16 by 16 yellow square at player.x, player.y. That's my goal. I'm planning to be the coder giga chad. Um, okay, so this is not working, um, and we got to figure out why this is not working. This, this block should be dropping. And I also noticed there's a black square here. I'm going to delete this. We don't need that black square. So when I connect, you know, let me go ahead and go to my uh, network tab and go to WebSockets, and let's see if we can get back a WebSocket event here. So we keep on getting this array of players like so and the first index is players which maybe that's cool oh wow what are all these players doing so their y is equal to like three thousand three billion so i think my gravity is probably just too high let's go back to the server um and let's go to Y 
what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, gravity, gravity. Let's make this lower. Let's make this like 0 0.0008 or something. Um, and there I go. Okay, yellow is not a good. I'm sorry, yellow is probably a bad color. I can't even see that. Let's just do like green. So gravity is super fast. Let's let's add another zero. <laughs> there we go. And what is a constant of gravity? Isn't it like 8.9 or something? 6.67? I don't know. If we were to remove a zero. It seems kind of fast. Um, 9.81. Yeah, I thought it was like 9 point something, but I guess the, you know gravity is not going to map up with our tick rate because it's going to be weird. So hopefully, if I were to change my tick rate, this should drop at a same, the same speed, right? So let's go ahead and go to the tick rate, which we should probably reduce, uh, make a constant. I'll say tick rate is equal to that. And I'll go ahead and say tick rate. If I do 60, I should still drop at the same rate. If I do 5, I should still drop at the same, like, Oh, maybe not. I feel like there's something wrong with my code then. Because if we update this once, five times every second, date now minus last update. What is delta here? Okay, well, that's not good. I probably need to say last update is equal to date dot now. And let me just go ahead and say like let <clears throat> now is equal to date dot now. And then I'll go ahead and just do that. There, so the tick rate is now consistent. I think that's what we're kind of going for. And uh, that's probably why my guys were dropping so fast. So 9.8 is what someone put Still kind of slow. Let's make this uh, like this. Oh wait, I'm trying to make it faster. Let me do this. Does that make sense? So if I increase the tick rate, it should still fall at a, a faster rate. It's just going to be a lot more smooth the faster the server tick rate is. Um. And then I guess move it to a point where it's like still smooth, but as low as possible because, um, yeah, Jason, if you look here, there's request animation frame. Let me go to chat real quick. That's the best way to do it. I mean, where where else would you put your 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 JavaScript? Why would I make it in a separate file? That wastes so much like file pointers on my operating system. Um, no, I just kind of use like existing ESLint rules. I don't think I have any projects. I might have a project that has some ESLint rules set up that you can check out, but yeah, I don't I don't really have a video that goes through my preference. I would probably just use Prettier, honestly or just let it format the code the way Prettier does it and don't think about it. But for ESLint, yeah, I don't know. I just use like a default standard. Uh, let's see. What plugin highlights the color code? What plugin highlights the color code? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you go to the client, this thing is green because I have a plugin or extension is what they call them. And I can go to my installed. And which one is it? I 
think it's called color highlight. It's this one right here, color highlight. This is the thing that's making this thing turn green in my code. Um, okay, I think we're good. We addressed some comments. Will you put TGIS code on your GitHub? I'm not sure what TGIS means. All right, so now we need to add some type of like collision, right? I'm also wondering, okay, so like as I keep refreshing, it should have cleared out the old players, but the server just keeps thinking there's a player here. So we're going to have to clear that out. Let's go to the server and say disconnect. And when you disconnect, we need to find the player whose socket matches this player's socket. So what the one easy way you can do this is I'm going to pull out the player to an object here, like so. And then I'm going to keep track of the, I'll say const player socket map. This is just going to be a map, and we're going to map the socket.id to the player, like so. And then we're going to push the player. So now every time someone leaves, we can simply just get the player who left here by doing something like this. And then we could just Secondly, delete this from the map or set it equal to null, whichever reference you like to do. But then we should probably also say socket emit, or I'm actually I'm gonna say um IO emit. I don't think we need to emit anything. We just need to remove them from the player. So I'm gonna say players is equal to players.filter player player dot well we need an ID on these things. So I think it might be safe to just put the the ID of the player equal to their socket ID. I don't know if that's maybe opening some security issues. The front end probably shouldn't know what socket ID this player is referring to, but let's just try it. It might be fine. But I want to filter out any ID that isn't equal to the socket ID who disconnected. So that should delete the players from this array here. Or not that array, uh, this array. Let's just um, double check what we're doing. This thing, player who left, is equal to player's map socket ID. We don't even need players as left anymore because we know who left. The socket is the one who disconnected. Um, let's try this again. It does crash, so let's look at what we're doing wrong. Assignment to a constant variable. Now, players was a constant, so we need to make this a let. Um, you could also use splice if you want to do it like a mutatable away. I mean, filter works fine, and we don't have that many players, so it's not that performant issue. But now when I refresh, there's only one green square the entire time. Hash the socket ID. Yeah, I could do that too. That's probably a good idea. Um, but at the end of the day, like... I'm not going to worry too much about security because then I have to bring in like MD5 hash package probably. So yeah, let's just try to add like some type of um, collision. So when the player drops every single time, where do we do that? Um, and by the way, if you're watching the stream, just do me a favor, click the like button. It helps my channel out. So if I've helped you and taught you how to code in JavaScript or anything, just click that like button. It really helps promote my video, I guess. At least that's what they tell me. I don't know how it actually works behind the scenes. Um, so what am I doing? When the player keeps dropping, I need to stop them from dropping and stop their acceleration and stop the gravity once they hit a block. So the back end actually needs to check if you're colliding with a block. 
is colliding with map. I'll make a function like this. Um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it's going to take in a player, and we're going to check if that player is colliding with a map object. So, right now I'm going to loop over this 2D map because it's small enough to do it, but at some point you probably want to actually extract the ones and figure out which X, Y locations the ones are so that you only need to check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You know what, let me just do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a const collidables. And this is going to be an array. And we're going to just do a, a double for loop. I know it's, it's ugly. But I'm going to do a for let i. Actually, I'm going to say let row equal 0, row less than map.length, row plus plus. And then I'm going to do it again. And then I'm gonna make this call, and then I'm gonna make this index of row. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say if map row of column, if it's equal to, if it's not equal to one or zero, then we know we've reached the collidable. So I'm gonna say collidables.push, and then I'm gonna say row call, that's it. And, um, yeah, so now that I think about it, we need to know the tile size and the player size on the back end. So I have to like kind of pull these out as well. And we might need a way to share the code between the, the server and the client. No, I'm not going to be using a quad tree. Like I'd, I'd have to go and like read up on that. And that would probably take me the entire stream reading about how to implement a quad tree. I don't think it's that important though for this this content. Honestly, if I was going to make a real game, I'd be using like Unity, right? I don't have to think about all these other like underlying performance things. I would use a game engine that takes care of like all of this stuff. I'm just trying to show you how you can like hack at something yourself in JavaScript. Okay, so is colliding with map. So as the player drops, we need to check like if they're colliding anywhere in the map then we probably need to either move them back and stop their velocity y. Like don't apply the gravity anymore. Um, we'll figure out if this works. So how do we do that? Well, we have like a collidable. So I'm gonna say for let collidable. And I think I can use const here. I don't know why I keep on using let. For const collidable of collidables with an S. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, what am I going to do? Help me out. What am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and just say, oh, you should probably add a with. OK, we'll just do this. Um, we, sh we need to go to Stack Overflow and find a, a 2D rectangle collision detection JavaScript. We're going to just figure this out by grabbing code online because it's it's it involves some math that I don't want to figure out on live stream. And I think this is basically it. Mm, is this it? Yeah, I think this could be it. Let me make sure I double check this. Yeah, we don't have rotation, so this should be fine. Um, there's some people chatting about stuff in the chat. Uh, I'll go to that in a second. Um, <clears throat> at some point, we got to <clears throat> split this file up into smaller files because it's becoming a little bit unmanageable at this point. I mean, it's only 100 lines of code, so it's not too hard to like manage, but we probably need to split this up into smaller modules. Um, anyway, let's just go ahead and say const is over over let's see is colliding is overlap rec one rec two let's do this let's take that code that we found and just throw it in there i'm going to say is colliding true is false why did i do a one here that's dumb do true rec one and rec two so the way our code works is 
I don't like using W, like I'd rather just spell it out with width. Like so, and then height could be spelled out. So let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Height with X, Y. I think this is good. Um, and then I need to say like, if we are colliding, is overlap get bounding box of player? How about that? Get bounding box of player. Get bounding box of collidable. Return false. Wait, no. If we're colliding, then return true. Now, I'm typing a lot of code, and I probably have bugs. So this thing is not a function. So I'm going to say const get bounding box of, uh, I don't know, entity, something. I don't know what we'd call it. I'll just keep it as entity. Or just say collidable. I'll keep it as collidable. So what we're going to do is... The problem is that these things have different widths, right? So it's either inside the object itself we need to add the widths and the heights, or we need to make these explicit and say get player bounding box. Um, I'd rather not put them on the object itself because those are all going to be sent over to the front end every single tick, which means we have a bunch of extra information that the front end doesn't need to know about. Like the width and height is hard coded in the front end for right now. So let's just go ahead and return a width, a height, an X, and a Y. Now X and Y we have, so we can just say player.x, and then we can also say player.y. But the width, this would have to be player size, and the height would be player size. And we could do the same thing for the tile. Yeah, I'll just say tile, and this could be tile. And the same thing here, this could be tile, this could be tile size. And we could find a way to make, make this um, Uh, I don't know, functional, like we could say like static size. If you wanted to do this, let's just do this. Get bounty box factory. I might just be making this more confusing. I'll say player size. Like so, and then I'll just go ahead and make a const get player bounding box is equal to this factory function that does this. Get tile bounding box is equal to the tile size. And then we could simply just call both of these. All right, the backend is not crashing anymore. Um, I don't know what to even expect in this UI. So if they're colliding with the map, we have to move them back. So player.y minus equals player.by. And then we probably need to stop them completely. So just stop moving them. I don't know if it's going to work. So let's check it out. Doesn't work. All right, let's go ahead and figure this out real quick. So if they are colliding with the map. Make that a cons while I'm doing that. I know people are, I think people are in chat are complaining about me using let there. So yeah, let's just use cons because those things don't change. It probably shouldn't change. That'll make some people happy. Oh wait, those do change. Okay, I'm a dumbo. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, change those back to let because I do increment them in the for loop here. I do plus plus, so I have to use a let for that one. But for the other approach here, I can use a const. All right, let's just take a step back and let's review our code because it doesn't work. We are still dropping all the way to infinity. So let's look at this. The player's velocity increases by gravity. 
player is x. I kind of wonder if this should be times delta here. Maybe that's fine. But anyway, increment the player's y by the velocity of y. Check uh, if the player is colliding with the map. And if they are, you need to move them back and stop their velocity. So, how does this work? We loop through all the collidables, which this could be undefined. This could be null, maybe. We, I didn't even check if this is defined. So let's just go ahead and print out collidables. And we do get back row and column. So the issue is that I call them row and column. And our get tile bounding box is expecting an X and a Y. So I need to go ahead and change that. Where are we doing row and column? This needs to be Y is equal to row times tile size. And this is X times or x is equal to this times tile size. Okay, I'm stopped. Yeah. Now it's kind of weird that it kind of like stops and slows down. Um, we could try to figure that out. So now we need the ability. Yeah, I'll post this code and get him. Using TypeScript would have saved me a ton of time. I don't know if I've actually had any issues in this project yet because I'm, oh yeah, I have, because I'm <laughs> I'm doing an, uh, an X and a Y and not a width. So you're right, using TypeScript would have saved me some time. Um, I just didn't want to put in the effort to like refactor this to TypeScript. So that's on me. But I do like using JavaScript sometimes. I do find it just fun and freeing. I feel like TypeScript, I don't know. Let's not talk about that. Let's just go ahead and make this a little bit, a little bit wider. So my map could be a little bit bigger. Like so. And um, I don't know why it didn't delete that other guy. All right, so moving. I think we should be able to add movement and then we can all probably connect to this server and see like how bad this, this code does and how much it's gonna crash. So for movement, this has to be controlled by the server. And really all we need to do is like, when we click, or when we um, click WASD on our, our keyboard. So I think I can say like document.addEventListener and I can say, Key down. I think key down is a proper one. And then typically what you need to also do is do a key up. So let's do a key up. You know what? I'm going to do key up versus... Isn't there like a key press as well? Whatever, we'll figure this out. Let's just go ahead and print out E here. Because I don't even remember. I think it's e.key. I think that's what we want. So let's go to the console. Let's refresh the page. I'm going to click D, A, S, D. All right, that's what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to track. I'm going to go ahead and say like key map. Actually, let me rename this to controls. And we're going to track this in a map that says up, false, down, left, right. And when you press different keys, we're going to say controls e dot key. Um, I'm going to make another one called key map. And then we're going to say w is equal to up. D is equal to right. You know, I'll, let me keep this consistent. Uh, S is down. A would be left. E would be right. So we're going to say key map, E of key, controls is equal to true. So we'll do that, and then we'll also set this to false. So as you're pressing keys, this thing should hopefully, if I go ahead and just print this out real quick, and look at this. Uh, let's see, up, down, left, right. So up went to true. Down is true, 
Left is true, right is true. And if I click and hold up, let's see what happens. So now it's true across the board. Seems pretty good, right? So now what I need to do is like every update, um, I could potentially just emit this controls map to the back end so that the, the, the server knows what to do with the player's controls. So I'm going to say socket.emit and I'll say controls, controls. Um, I could make this more like don't send the same thing over and over again. In fact, I could probably like do some type of memoization to say like if I've already sent the same combination of up, down, left, right, then don't send it again. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on performance tweaks. All right, so on the, on the back end, we have to listen for that event. We just added a event from the front end. And when we, let's go here. I'm going to say socket on controls. Uh, and then this is going to pass in a client controls like this. And we just want to keep track of that player's controls. So I could maybe make another one called like const control map is an object. And I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, controls map socket.io is equal to controls. So now the player sends his like current controls over to the server. And what the server needs to do is during the update phase, which is happening in the tick, we have to basically handle those. Uh, someone asked, why don't I use new map? I just don't find a true benefit to using the map class versus just using a map object. I think they both achieve the same thing. Um, there's like some nuances to it, honestly, but you could also call me old and stuck in my ways. So that's probably why as well. You typed ID instead of IO. I typed ID instead of IO. Are you talking about here? It's supposed to be ID. I guess it'll crash and I'll find out from my exception where it crashes. But anyway, so like as we're looping through um, every player, which is happening here, we should probably get like the player controls from controls player dot. Actually, I think we call this like player map, player socket map. Here's the issue. We don't know what the socket. Uh, yeah, I think we probably do need to keep track of the player and map them. Oh, we do have an ID on the player. OK. Yeah, so I'll just say player.id. So that'll give us the controls that are associated with that player, I believe. And let me just go ahead and print that out. Controls is not defined. What did I, what did I call this? I called this something else in my controller map. Control map. I might rename this to controls map. This is why you use TypeScript, everyone. Controls map. All right, so it's printing out undefined for all these, which probably not the best. I think I might actually have to like send over a control for it to not be undefined. I work for a company. I have a full-time full stack job. All right, so controls map. Let's, let's double check something real quick. So we emit controls which should be sending over to the back end. And then we do an on control somewhere.
and then we set this equal to controls. Let's make sure this is working. So I'll just say like controls, controls, go ahead and save it, restart my server. There we go, we are getting some stuff back. A lot of console logs. Um, yeah, maybe I just didn't save the file or it didn't refresh properly, but now we're getting some controls back. And then what we wanna do is probably default this to an empty array because if the player hasn't actually done a left, up, down, or right, then it's probably gonna be undefined. So I'm gonna just default it using the nullish coalesce to empty object here. And then we're gonna say if players control right, that's down, or if it's true, then we can simply say player.x plus equals player speed. How about that? Let's go ahead and just do that. Where's the player speed set up? Const player speed is equal to, we'll start at 1.0, but that might be way too high. And then we'll do the same thing with left. And these should probably be constants, honestly, but yeah, let's just, just go ahead and say like const right is equal to right. Up, down, left. Right, up, down, left, right. All right, let's go ahead and find where we were doing that. Is right here, so I'll just say right. And then we'll say left. And then if we're moving left, we gotta move to the to the the minus x direction right so let's just go ahead and see does this work can i move we are moving but the issue is is that this speed is just too slow so let's go up here and change this to like three let's three times it now i think there's an issue like i can move over the box so we have to also check the collisions in the x and y direction to prevent them from like going that way so every time you move i'm gonna make this an else if because you can't move left and right at the same time like if you have a and d held at the same time it's just gonna have to pick one so if i hold them both down it's just whichever one the server decides which is always going to be right All right, let's see what we got. How is the transaction code of the application generated? Is there any way to calculate the next transaction code? I cooperated with you if it is calculated. I will give you, I'm not sure. What are you talking about? Transaction code. Do you have a video on how did you land your first job? Um, no, but it's pretty straightforward. I uh, graduated, and before I graduated, I interviewed someplace, and they gave me an offer letter. That's how I got my first job. <laughs> it just it was that simple. But this is like a long time ago, so maybe the market's a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, I've in I've made a lot of like two D games using JavaScript in the past, so. I wouldn't say I'm genius. I think this guy is actually more correct. Brain muscle memory is actually probably correct. I have wasted so many hours trying to build little games like this in my spare time that I don't have to look this stuff up anymore. Other than the collision, obviously I gotta look that up. Like I don't know this math off the top of my head. Um what if up, down, left, right were enums? I, okay, so e enums don't exist in JavaScript. At least, at least I don't think they do. Yeah, like enums don't exist. You just make an object like this. Um, which is basically what I did here. I mean, like I could simply say const uh, controls is equal to, and I could do this. Like this would make you a little happier. I could do that. Why is it? Okay, stop. Do this. 
So this is t this is not an enum. This is just an object, right? But technically, it's the same thing as an enum. But now I got to find out where I'm doing left and right, and I could just do this. And does that work still? Oh yeah, no worries. Yeah, I'm using JavaScript. Um, if you hold both. You shouldn't move either way, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think of like playing CSGO. I'm pretty sure if you hold down A and D, it, it's going to pick a direction for you, right? I would make a velocity variable. I don't know. Have you guys played like CSGO or any first person shooter? I'm pretty sure if you hold down A and D at the same time, it doesn't cancel you out, or does it? Maybe it does. This point, I don't know. I don't know if players are going to collide with each other because like we could try doing that, but it's going to be a, a big issue when you have a bunch of people joining at the same time. They all get stuck on each other. There's a lot of like error handling you got to keep in mind when you do that. Um, you can add last press with it and add it to the if statement on the server side like this if players control left and players control last click is equal equal to left i don't know let's not get too caught up on like the controls i think he works fine but the issue is we have to check when you try to move in the x direction if you've collided with something in the x direction then you need to move back like this so now I'm stuck. It works this way. Now the issue is, um, I think I need to do this individually. I have to, I have to do this. I have to like plus it, but then I need to check if we were going left then we have to reverse it in the other way. I think it might be easier just to do this, honestly. Is that sloppy? It might be. But if you're moving left, then you have to move back to the right. If you're moving right, you got to move back to the left. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not happy with that, but... I could do like a direction, like a dx. Const dx, so direction x is equal to... If we're moving right... You know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it. It's just bad, but whatever. Cool. So now we're stuck here. I don't like the speed. The speed's just so slow. Still, let's just move this to like five. I like those fast-paced games, fast-paced shooters. And then it's still a little choppy, so I might actually increase the tick rate to twenty-five. Like, should probably just do thirty to be honest. But I don't know what happens if y'all join this game. And I feel like the gravity is slower than the person falling. So like gravity, let's bump this up to 1.2. There, we got a fast pace shooter. Um, let me let me commit this and let me push this. And maybe you guys can try joining and we'll see what happens. Let's see, ability for a player to move around the map so we've been streaming for like an hour so far and i mean we've got some decent progress going but what i want to do is just try to get this deployed to railway i'm about to run out of my free resources here so let's just go ahead and start a project and i'm going to go ahead and deploy it from my websocket game repo now i don't know if i can choose the branch because i'm i'm working off of this one on a side scroller branch but it's going to deploy off of my main branch. Oh, here you go. Side scroller. All right, so that should hopefully redeploy, but I'm also going to generate a domain here so that we can all connect to it together. And uh, watch my server crash. Um, and while that's loading, one thing I want to look up is... Um, Yeah, this is like the old game I made last stream. We were all on the same page moving around like this. But 
One thing I noticed last stream is that someone kept opening new tabs and just keep on connecting to my server, which caused it to just make tons and tons of players and ended up just slowing it down. Um, so what I'm actually going to do... is I'm going to how to get IP of socket IO connect. I'm basically going to check if you've already connected with this IP, I'm going to go ahead and not let you connect again. Handshake address. I think you can do it like this. This might be kind of old. When was this published? This was published in the year of 2015. Oh, actually, answer 2011. <laughs> so this is super old. Uh, he's saying you can use request connection remote address here. Let's see if this actually works. I'm just going to go ahead and say like on connect. We're going to print out console.log socket and then all that stuff and see if it prints out anything for us. It does print out something. This one's been de deprecated. He's just saying use socket. Socket IO docs. You know, we could also just print out request. What is happening with request here? Let's see if there's anything cool here. We could search for IP, maybe. No, I think I saw something. Your name. If anyone chat happens to know like how I would get that, but it's probably well. I want to figure it out before you guys just flood my server. Let's see if I can search for IP address. IP address. Is there a way to get the IP address? I also wonder what version of socket IO. Request connection remote address. Thank you so much if that works. Let's try that out. Just REQ. Oh, it might be request. No, that's undefined too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and print out this whole socket like so and we're going to copy all this and we're going to go ahead and paste that in another file and we're going to search for any type of IP yeah it's remote address okay so we have this what is this nested in con client con is that really what I need to do? Socket dot client con remote address. One thing I never really learned how to do that well is find stuff in docs, right? The fact that like you go to socket IO, you type in IP address. How do you find it? Like, how do you look through all this doc and find what you want when their search stuff doesn't give you what you want? Remote address doesn't come up. Anyway, I was complaining. But I think this will work, whatever this remote address is. And what I want to do is, like, if you all try to connect multiple times, so I'm going to go ahead and say, like, const IP map is equal to this. And I'm going to go ahead and just say, if IP map of this thing already exists, I'll do this and then I will just go ahead and say IP address and if you're already in here I'm gonna basically disconnect you by return but if you're not I'm gonna go say IP map of IP address is equal to true um, so you're, you're already connected this one should probably be false or you could just delete it whatever just delete it so if you're already connected, we are going to... Oh, wait, we don't want to delete you. We want to, when you disconnect the real way, we're going to delete you. Like that. 
Don't know if this will work. I never tried this before. So now when I refresh the page and I try to load up a new tab, it just doesn't work. I'm not connected, which is exactly what we want. So I think this will work. I don't know if it'll work when it's deployed, but it works locally. This thing can go away. That can go away. This, refresh the page. My deployment failed, but let's just go ahead and say um, limit by IP address. Let's go ahead and add that and publish that branch. Side scroller is the branch name. Limit by IP address. Why is this thing failing? Address is already in use. What? Interesting. This breaks once someone connects twice because you disconnect them, then the logic fires. Was that with that other thing I was doing? Okay, hold on. And then I disconnect them. I'd rather put that there. So, I mean, let me try to make sure I understand what you're saying, Michael. So you're saying this logic doesn't work. So if I've already connected with one socket, and I've already cached that IP address in a map, and then you load up another tab with another socket connection, it's going to say this IP address already exists, and it's going to disconnect that new tab. That one goes away. The old one sticks around and doesn't get disconnected. Yeah, but I'm not... Okay, so I'm not removing them from the, the map anymore. I moved that... Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Hold on. You're saying that when I force them to be disconnected, this is going to, this one won't even be invoked though, because I haven't registered the event listener. So this will never fire because I've never can, I never listened to like when they get disconnected. I think this should be fine. Socket handshake address. Socket handshake address. I thought I tried doing that. Console log. Socket hand shake address. Let's see if this one works. Okay, that works too. Maybe that's probably a better way to do it. Let's just do that. All right. Um, so at this point, I mean, it sh I think it's deployed. Oh, you guys are already here. What's up, y'all? So something we did in the other stream is we changed the boxes to be random colors and then we also added a random name in, uh, above the players. We could try doing that as well. npm random name. Let's go ahead and npm install random name. By the way, do you guys like watching this type of stream, or you guys rather me go back to like React stuff? Um, just curious. And also, while you're watching, go ahead and click that like button for my. Uh, I only got 84 likes, but I got 121 people watching. Just press the like button because that's what people who stream say that you should do. This isn't the refresh breaks. Yeah, that's the solution provided by your master Stack Overflow. All right, so we got some type of bug. You're saying refreshing breaks the app. Oh yeah, it definitely does. <laughs> I wonder if my server is actually crashing. How do I find the logs? I think I click, oh, hold on. 
Client connected. Client connected. Go ahead and look here. So my deployed app. What's going on here? WebSocket is closed before the connection is established. You guys need to stop finding bugs in this game. My product owner is not going to be happy with all the bugs you guys are finding. All right, let me just go ahead and do the random name real quick, and we'll also look into how to like fix this stuff up. Random name. So we're going to go ahead and import random name real quick. And then we're going to look into how to fix this bug. Uh, it should be pretty simple to just, when we have a server connect, a person connect, I'm going to go ahead and just make a random first name. Random.first. There we go. Now every player has a random name. And then also in the UI, I think there's a way to draw the name. So as we're like looping over and drawing the player, we can also, I don't know how to do it. Let's see. JavaScript. Canvas draw text. Fill text. Text X and Y. Fill text player.x player.y minus. Let's just do minus 10. And then we should do their name. So player.name. Let's run dev again. Let's refresh this. So I got a little name here. Might want to offset it a little bit by, we'd have to like look at how long their name is, honestly, but this is probably good enough. And then we should probably just make it like black. <laughs> All right, so why would this be crashing? That's what we got to debug now. I think it's probably related to this IP stuff. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and remove the IP stuff and maybe the person in the chat was right about what I mentioned with uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just not do this. Comment it out. Go ahead and push it up and see if that fixes the issue. So I'm going to say display random name above player comment out IP map logic. Oh yeah, he's right. A hard refresh does seem to, well. Let me go over here. Use address address. I can everyone connect to my railway app now? Like, is it letting you in? Is it working fine? If it is, then I'm going to assume that my address logic is just not good. And it could also be that there's like a load balancer happening. So the IP address is like the same for my players. Look at all you guys just stuck in my little pool of tiles. Okay, it's working. Yeah, I don't know. So someone's saying use address address. Let's just go ahead and print out what socket address address is. Now, there might be like a an X forwarded for or something. No, that doesn't work either. Railway socket. Give you a UID to each player. A socket I'll get a uh, handshake address. Okay, what version of this am I on? Let me go all the way down. Socket con remote address. This returns one for me. Yeah, this is what I said in the solution I gave. All you have to do is regex. On socket IO, you have the following possibilities. 
I don't even know what version of socket IO I am using. So let's go to package JSON and find the socket IO. I'm using 452. So does anyone explain with socket IO version 45? Handshake address address. Hold on. Can you point me to the docs where you're finding this stuff? Like I'm I'm not saying I don't trust you. I just I want to know like why is this not easily documented somewhere? Because that handshake socket handshake address address prints out undefined. So that doesn't work either. X forwarded four might work, but I think you can easily spoof that maybe. Um but yeah, let's see if there's a way to get the headers, I guess. Socket remote address is also undefined, so that won't work. You know, let me just go to the docs and just spend some time. Socket IO docs. Let's just be patient. Let's go through server, the socket instance. Let's see if they have an address here. So socket address, the IP of the client on the handshake. Examples, headers. There's also headers too, so maybe we could print out the headers and then the address. Socket handshake address. Yeah, I mean, this should work. Socket handshake address should work. Res socket. Well, I don't have res here. This is socket IO. Handshake headers x real IP port. So we're gonna figure this out, y'all. We're gonna print out the headers as well, and let's just go ahead and see what happens. So here is the address, and then we have handshake headers. And we got some headers. And you're saying I can use X real IP? There are docs specifically for this case. Let's see if we can find them. Behind a reverse proxy, maybe? Building multiple nodes, hand in cores. Um X real IP. Yeah, we could try that. Let's try that. We could say headers, headers, X real IP. Link above. Um, unfortunately, you cannot send links in my chat. So you have to probably join my Discord and send me a message message there or something. Like a just DM me on Discord if you have a real link. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out um The problem is is I can't test this locally. Like I don't know what load balancer they use. So I might have to like have this fall back on something if that's not defined locally. So locally it prints out IP address. Yeah, it's either X forwarded for or X real IP. We'll have to figure this out. That, or I'm going to go ahead and fall back on the socket and take address. And then where's X forwarded for? Let's just look at that. I mean, go to my YouTube channel and then go to my about profile page. There should be a description. Go ahead and comment this out. Let's just try all of them. I don't know which one's going to be the right one when you're deployed to Railway. It really depends on how Railway has their proxies set up or if they do this correctly. But we're going to try to just commit this and see what happens. Try X forwarded four. We're just going to try everything.
Address is an object with address and port. Is it though? Because when I console log it, I get back a string, right? If I actually say type of, like this is a string. So I, I'm on I'm on socket IO version 4.5. Can you please add some buttons that work on mobile in different colors for your player? All right, let me add you as a friend real quick. Hold on. Where's my friend requests? All right. Let's look at Railway. Let's see if this thing works now. I'm going to refresh the app. And that's working. Um, let me go ahead and make a new tab and make sure that it breaks. Okay, it's not working anymore. I think I think this fixes it. Now, I don't know if this is proper. Someone sent me this. Limit number of IP events by IP unique IP or rate limited flexible. What is this? Connection on Bcast. Web socket single connection prevent flooding. The most simple is rate limiting by IP. So there's a package that does all this for us. But the issue is again, it's like address is not what we want, I don't think, because on railway app when this is deployed, I think they're basically setting a header that we have to use. But I mean I think we got it working. Wait, is it is it broken? Can you guys move? I'm moving. Everyone move to the right. Go to the very far right of the page. Hey, you guys are you guys are broken. <laughs> this is this is prison simulator. If you guys want to uh, send me five bucks, I'll give you the um, the fully polished deployed app where you can actually choose your name. That's that's the uh, the end game purchases I plan to do. You can change your name instead of it being random. You can actually pick a name. So five bucks. That's all it takes. Awesome. So, okay, I think there's some more things we could try to add in. We could add jumping. I think that would be cool, and you guys can all jump to your deaths. So that's what we can work on next. I'm glad we got this IP limiting stuff so that people don't flood my server. Um, yeah. So now locally, we need to add the ability to jump. So on the front end, we are going to add another control for jump. I'll say jump is false, and then space is for jump. So now when I press on the space button, I should be able to jump. And then in my player updating, which is here, what should we do? So apply the gravity and then make them fall. But yeah, I don't really know what we should do here. Let's go ahead and go to the controls. I'm going to say jump is jump. If player controls dot controls of jump, then what we want to do is we want to push some velocity y is equal to jump speed. And I'll do negative jump speed. Or maybe jump speed can just be like defined up here. Const jump speed is equal to negative 100 or 10. That's definitely broken. Um, The problem with the space bar is that it actually scrolls the page, which is weird. So I think what I want to do is like on the body, I think I need to say like overflow of none, overflow hidden, so that the space bar doesn't actually scroll anything. That works fine, but let's debug this a little bit. Um, let's verify that the controls, when we emit them, 
console.log controls is space. Jump is never getting set to true for some reason. Okay, why is that? Key map. Add event listener key down. Maybe it's called something else. Oh yeah, e dot prevent default. That's a good idea too. Don't know if I need it on key up. I probably don't, do I? But if I do prevent default, that means I don't need to overflow hidden this thing. And then Yeah, I don't know why this maybe the key is not jump. Maybe it's not called uh base. Maybe it's called something else. So key down. Let's just go ahead and do e dot key. It's probably going to be the actual like space space character, isn't it? All right, so this, I uh, don't know if I like this too much, but this is actually what I need to do. I need to put a space here. Why is this not working? Space is just an empty space. Yeah, maybe I need to refresh my page. Did I not do that? All right, bear with me, y'all. What is printing out? Okay, hold on. Let's delete this. Delete controls. Why is this still printing? Up. All right, there we go. I, well, okay, so the issue was I kept refreshing my page with Command R, but I had my terminal selected, so it just kept on refreshing like my terminal or something. But now look at the issue. You can keep on jumping forever, which is pretty cool. So let's just go ahead and ship this. Let's see ability to jump. Let's see what you guys end up doing with this little feature. Is it a feature? Or is it a bug? That's the real question. I call it a feature because now I can jump in the void. Is gonna be crazy. Let's see what you all do. Oh, I think we should also do random, random uh, hex, random hex color npm. I know I've done this like a thousand times in other streams. You know, what, let's see if I can remember how to do this. I've done this so many different times in so many different videos, but I cannot remember how to do it because I don't know why. Where do I make the player? I'm gonna say color is equal to. I think I can do a hex value. I'm probably going to be off by one. So let's add one to that hex value. And then I'm going to say math.random times that hex value. And then I could say two string. Isn't it two string of 16 or I forget what it's called? Two fixed? I think it's two string radix 16. And then I'm going to put a hashtag in front of that. Did I get that right this time? I feel like I've done this a thousand times in different streams. But what I want to do is like when the, when we're drawing, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fill this with player.color. Let's see if this works with the random color now. Does not work. Why does this not work? Let's go ahead and print out what player color is. Okay, so now it's like it's a pinning two things together. What am I doing wrong here? So I take this x value, I add one to it, I do math.random. Oh, I probably need to floor it, don't I? Uh, math.floor. Probably have too many parentheses here. Let's try this again. Why is my command R not working anymore? Because I'm preventing default. That's annoying. There we go. We got some random colors. So let's go back and I'm going to go ahead and just find that console log. 
um, console.log. Don't need the colors anymore. I'm going to go ahead and just do adding random colors. Let's. Wait, did I even add that? Hold on. Look at all my people flying around my map. I think something we did on another stream is you can, um, you can, we can highlight, we can add a border to your current player. Now this one might be a little bit more challenging and it could be pretty straightforward. So when we render the players, where is the render? Where's the draw function? Did I call it render or draw? I think I called it draw. Oops. Can I add mobile controls? Uh, yeah, I could try to do that real quick. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight the player. So if, I'm gonna do this. If the player.id is equal to socket ID. So if you're the current player, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a red, do a red. Um, I think I need to put this as a string. I'm going to draw a red box that's a little bit bigger than the player. We'll do like one pixel bigger than the player. In fact, maybe it needs to be three because I have to offset it by some. Minus one, minus one. Let's see what happens if we do this. Uh, I, okay, I need to do that before I draw the player. So let's go ahead and do that above this. That looks kind of weird. Um, maybe just do two. There we go. All right, someone's also asking if I can add mobile controls. I mean, that feels like a lot of work because I don't really know how this would even look on mobile. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I even bother adding mobile controls or should I just add some type of real functionality? Like a game, like some type of teams or something. Let me refresh this page real quick. Add battle pass and different color cubes in it. All right, let's make this map a little bit bigger. Sorry, I'm not gonna do the mobile controls. I just don't feel like doing that. I know it's I know you want to play, but prevent default. Uh, all right, what do we want to do? We want, let's make this map big. Let's make this a bigger map. So we're going to like, we're going all out. Let's go ahead and make this thing a bunch of different tile sizes. Like so. And we're going to go ahead and just replace a bunch of these. Like so. Let's make some platforms here. Yeah, should I make some random things spawn? And if you collect them, you get some points. Let's try that. I'm also going to reduce the... I might increase the gravity a little bit, times it by two, and reduce the jump. Just by a little bit. I feel like the jump's a little too power, too OP. Okay, this map is not going to work. I need to kind of make this map work for our player. Okay, this one. Now the problem is, is when you fall, I wonder if this is, I, I need to make the jump speed like good enough where I can jump from platforms to platforms. So like, okay, this needs to be a higher jump. So I'll do a nine. Don't take our jumps away. 
Do you guys like it so you can keep jumping uh, like infinitely? I feel like I cannot. I might need to turn off the jump. Ooh. Uh oh. You know, I think there's more more tiles that are not being displayed. So what we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna make the board. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make the background white, like so, and then I'm gonna draw a rectangle across the entire board like this. But then in the actual page itself, I'm gonna go ahead and say background is black. Oh wait, I guess it wouldn't matter because we full screen the, uh... yeah, what am I doing? Let me undo that. This E prevent default is kind of annoying me because I can't just refresh my browser. So I'm actually going to go back to adding the overflow hidden on the canvas, like so, so that I can refresh the page with my command R because that's kind of annoying me. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to prevent it from j double jumping or like infinite jumping. So what we need to do is keep track of like a, a map that says can jump. I'll say, let's just say jump map. I don't know. These are like bad names for stuff, but at this point I'm just having some fun. So when you jump, which is here, I want to make sure that you can jump for your jump map of player ID is true. And yeah, let me rename this to can jump. So if you are allowed to jump, then I'm going to go ahead and say player.id equals false. But then when you're falling in the y direction, I'm going to go ahead and just set it equal to true. Don't know if that'll work. Let's see. So now I can't spam the jump key anymore. And again, like there's not enough, there's not enough velocity to even make this playable. So I'm going to go ahead and do like a negative 10 here. I should be able to get to everywhere on this map via jumping. This one, I need to fix that a little bit. Go ahead and do this. This one could be like this. All right, let me ship what I got. Let's see, expanding the map. All right, so I am shipping a new feature for you all where you guys can actually play around on a larger map. So be sure to click that refresh button, reload the page, and at some point when this is fully deployed, which it should be deployed now, we should be able to jump around on a big map. Yeah, I, I banned the bot. I don't know if he's still displaying for you all, but I'm going to go ahead and hide user on this channel. Now he should be gone. All right, so no, I don't have mods. If you keep jumping, then you fly, but you need to fall down. What the heck? <laughs> People are stuck to the roof. Look at this. All right, so if you were trying to move up in the Y direction, I think we need to also like prevent that from happening. So let's see if we can kind of get that going. So I think what we need to do, this I mean, this is super inefficient, but the map is so small. 
that when you're jumping, how do we do this? It's almost like if your velocity is in the y direction, Yeah, it's like you only want to do this if the velocity is in the y direction. So if player.vy was negative, actually, then that's when we want to allow them to jump again. Because otherwise, like, you can just jump and you get st stuck. Uh, okay, that's not good. Oh, uh, let me move this up. No, how do I do that? So move in the Y direction down. But they could still be going up. Velocity could still be positive. And if velocity is positive, that means they are moving up. Which, mean, which also means that they shouldn't be able to jump if they're moving up. So maybe I should just say if VY is greater than zero, then and jump should be false. This will move us back and stop our velocity with the map. Yeah, what am I, uh, for some reason I have some trouble thinking about this. So if you've collided with a tile and you've just updated the y direction, you either can collide by going up or you can collide by going down. If you collided with going down, maybe I should put it up here. If you were going down, which means the velocity would be positive, then you can jump again. I don't know if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that actually fixes it. Yeah, I was confusing myself. All right, yeah, so let's, let's try to get some coins. Um, let's go ahead and randomly spawn some coins around this map. So let's just go ahead and say const spawn coin. And we're going to go ahead and just pick a random location that is not one of these ones. So let's just pick, actually, let's pick any location that's two above a one. You know, whatever, let's just, let's just keep this simple. I think I'm making this too complex. I'm just going to pick a random location. So I'm going to say const random row is equal to math.random times map.length and then math.floor this and then I'll say random column. Same idea, but this will be that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just say, I need to keep track of coins too. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let coins is equal to that. And we're going to go ahead and broadcast the coins as well. Now we're getting to territory where this game is probably going to start crashing for everybody because it's just too much bandwidth maybe. Maybe it can handle it. I don't know. But we're going to say coins.push, and we're going to push a new coin of X's. A random row times tile size and y could be random row times tile size and then we're going to go ahead and um <clears throat> it's probably fine we probably need a coin size let's say like coin size and we'll just do like six spawn coin and then we're going to do a set timeout so i'm going to say set or i'm sorry set interval Spawn coin every one second so you guys can have the opportunity to find those coins. And every time we spawn a coin, we need to check if the player is colliding with the coin. So, is colliding with map? I'm going to say get coin bounding box, could be another function coin size like this. And then we probably need to do. For every coin, let's just go ahead and say like four let our const coin of coins. If uh, I'll just do this. This might while we're looping over the players, I'm gonna loop over every coin. I'm say if 
is colliding. Actually, how did we do that before? Is overlap, I think is what we called it. Is overlap, and then get coin bounty box, coin, and then get player bounty box of player. If those are colliding, what we want to do is we want to remove the coin. So coins is equal to, well, we can't remove the coin right now because we're doing a for loop. So one trick that you can do is you can loop over these things backwards. Wait, what am I doing? This needs to be I. So start the end of the coins link list, loop over backwards if the coin is overlapping with the player. I'm going to say player.score++. Plus plus, and we're going to go ahead and put on the player object itself a score of 0. So now I can increment your score as you collect coins. Maybe we can do like a leaderboard too. That would be pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and say like if you've collected the coin, I'm going to say coin splice i of 1. So that'll remove the coin from the list. And then in the UI, could you add a respawn if you fall off the map? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, hold on, this thing is crashing. It's probably because I use cons for coins. Coin is not defined. Cons coin is equal to coins of I. All right. So the server is working still we should be spawning random coins every second but we're not drawing them so we have to keep track of the coins like we do the players so i'll say coins is equal to an empty array and we will also say on play on coins server coins And we're going to loop over, we're going to draw the coins. So how do we do that? Let's just go ahead and copy this for loop. Ooh, I guess, hold on. Not weird. The player should be on top of the coin. So I'm going to put the coins here. So let coin of coins make this a const. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw out the coin, which should be coin X and Y, and the coin color will be a yellow, which I think is this color. And then I'll say coin size, which again comes from the back end. So we should probably put this at the top of this file where we have our constants, like so. And do we get some coins showing up? There we go. We got all these coins that you can collect. Kind of hard to see the coins, so I might make them a different color. There we go. I also don't like how the coins are spawning on top of like the, the ground, so spawn coin probably needs to be a little bit smarter. So I'm gonna say if, map of random row random column if it's not equal to zero i'm just going to return and just skip that so we won't spawn coins like inside the map all right so let's let's push this change i'm going to say spawning coins go ahead and commit this push it up and let's wait for this thing to build <clears throat> Should be deployed, and now, I know my voice cracked so hard right there. <clears throat> All right, let's just go ahead and see if you all can join. What I don't like about um, Railway is that, like, when I do a deploy, it seems like it actually takes down my application to redeploy it. Like, that's not good. All right, so we have these things all printing to the canvas. 
But what we want to do is we want to have a Yeah, create the coins as circles. That's a good idea. If you leave the space button pressed, you will be levitating. Um, play a sound when you collect the coin. Can you add points? Yeah, so I'm going to do a leaderboard first. I think it'd be cool to have a leaderboard over here on the right that updates as you uh, collect the coins. So on the front end, we are, we already have the score. So let's go ahead and see if there's a way to like make a leaderboard. So to the right of the canvas, I'm going to make an ID called leaderboard. And what we're going to do is uh, what should we do? I might just make an interval every five seconds we update the leaderboard. We'll just clear it out. Um, so I'm going to say set interval. And I'm going to say every five seconds. I will go ahead and get that leaderboard. So I'll say const leaderboard is equal to the document get element by ID leaderboard. So we get it from the DOM. And then we're going to go ahead and just for every player, for let const player of players, we're going to go ahead and just Clear out the leaderboard first, so leaderboard clear. And then we're going to go ahead and make a entry. Uh, so I'll say like for el is equal to document.create element could be a div. And then we need to have that have score el dot inner text going to be equal to the player dot name. And then also the player dot score, like so. But we're we're gonna have to sort these players by score. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a um, sorted sorted scores is equal to dot 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 players sort uh, e one e one p two p one score minus p two score. I think I need to do it in the descending order like that. So now I could loop over the sorted scores, make a div, make the inner HTML. I'm going to say leaderboard dot pin child of score el. And the leaderboard, like we should probably style it a little bit. So leaderboard uh, background could be um, black maybe text can be white position could be absolute and then the right could be zero pixels and then the width could be 100 text color wait why is text undefined isn't oh it's called color not text all right so let's look at this thing um maybe i'll make it fixed so it's like actually on the page Price is not showing up though. Here's leaderboard. I gave it absolute, I gave it fixed positioning. Oh, it's because I gave it a class of leaderboard. Duh. There it is, but it doesn't have a height, so height of 400 pixels. There we go, width of 200. And then at some point, like the, the names should have been displayed here. ID of leaderboard. It element by ID leaderboard of, I'm going to name this leaderboard L. And then we're going to go ahead and we keep appending the children. I wonder why this isn't working. Leaderboard L clear is not a function. Is it not called clear? Maybe it's called empty. I'm gonna make this every two seconds instead. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Huh. I mean, this must be undefined then.
There's a leaderboard. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Enter HTML is equal to empty string like that. That should clear it out. And then the minus, I don't like the minus. So I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this. Width is a little bit big. Might make it 140. Um, I don't like how, okay, let's give this some padding of like 10 pixels. Font size of 18 pixels, it's really small. But also what I wanna do is, um, I want this to draw. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a function called draw leaderboard. This is this instance, this is an instance where like, if you had React, like this would be so much easier to do. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. So when it first loads, it should draw players. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna make height 100 VH. So it takes up the full width. I'm gonna push this. Let's see, adding leaderboard. Make the coin position to be one tile above the platform. Calculate the possible. I think it's fine to make it. Well, yeah, I see the issue where like it's spawning coins in places you can never get. So that's kind of annoying. So yeah, I should probably make it like one or two above the platform. So like, you know, you can kind of get it. <laughs> Can you add a different color for who has more points? Uh, possibly, yeah. All right, we're redeploying it now. And it should hopefully be redeployed at some point. Okay. And there we go. I uh, can't reach those. This is so silly. I wonder if there's a way we can make this a little bit more less laggy. I could make the color of the scoreboard match the color of the player. Yeah, that would be interesting. And I wish there was a way, I don't know if I need to improve, increase the tick rate. Yeah, I need to do some type of like dead reckoning, client side prediction and interpolation because right now it's really jittery, but I'd have to go and like read up on game dev theory and stuff to be able to even figure that out. Um, that's not laggy. I mean, it seems kind of choppy to me. Okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try increasing the tick rate by a little bit. I'll do 40 so it's a little bit faster. And then, yeah, if you fall down to your death, like I'm just going to have it respawn you somewhere. So what we could do is on the tick, I think the easiest way to check this is just check if your velocity, if your VX, or if your VY is like uh, greater than some arbitrary value, which I don't know what a good value would be. 
if it's greater than one maybe or greater than two we'll respawn you back to this, i don't know 100 player dot y equals 100. so let's just see if this works locally that's definitely not going to work so let's do Oh, player.vy is equal to zero. I can either check if you go out of bounds like with y or how come this is not, hold on. If your vy becomes greater than 20, vy is equal to zero, move them back to 100, 100. Why do I get stuck at the bottom though? If the player VY is greater than 20, set their VY to zero, move them back to 100, move the player X back to 100. Uh, There's a platform at the bottom. I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, let me make sure that... um. This probably isn't the best approach because, like, you could have a map where you know that there's, like, a platform at the bottom. So I would need to at least make this pretty big. It's probably better to, like make it y when your y is like super low down okay that was way okay 200 is too much let's just do 60. there we go okay next thing i'm going to work on is camera uh, so I want the camera to focus on the player and I want to move everything based on the camera position. So inside of render on the client, this shouldn't be too hard to do, knock on wood. But in my draw method, I'm actually going to get the camera X is equal to your player. So I have to say players dot find player player ID is equal to socket.id. So find your player. I'll just say like your player or I'll say origin player. Player to focus. Yeah, it's probably better to just check the Y, but like I'd have to go and look at the number of columns in the map and then times it by the tile height. So yeah, maybe that's actually a better approach. I will, I'll do that. <clears throat> I'm going to say if the player's y is greater than uh, map of zero dot length. Actually, just map of length times tile size times two. If you're greater than that, I'm going to assume you've, you've fallen over the, the map, right? That's probably much better. So thank you for that suggestion. I don't know why I was doing velocities. But also at some point, if your velocities get too fast, you're going to start falling through platforms because you're going to actually have to draw a line between the boxes of your previous position and your new position, and then check if that line intersects with a box. So it might make sense to actually limit by velocity, but that could be a, a math.max so that you're not like falling through platforms at some time. But anyway, let's go back to what we're doing. So I wanted to get the player that we're trying to focus on by getting the player ID equals the socket ID. And we're going to say const camera x is equal to player to focus dot x minus. We'll have to figure this out. I'm not, I always forget how to do this. I think it's like canvas dot width, inner width. Canvas dot width. And CY would be the focus, half of the width, half the height. I think, I think this is how I did it in a, a long time ago when I used to do this type of stuff. So the camera X would be over the player, 
but then you actually have to shift over to the left half of the width and shift up half of the height. But then you'd have to draw everything by reference here. So as we are drawing stuff, I think you can just add CX and add CY. Same thing here, add CX, add CY. And here it could be add CX, add CY. Kind of kind of hacky. Uh, there might be a better way to do this. Probably ex abstract this out to a helper function. Um, plus CX, plus CY. Thank you. I'm glad you guys like the mustache. Cannot read property of X of undefined. So layer to focus is not being found probably because we haven't actually uh, done it yet. So let's make this zero zero and if player player to focus, let's move this up. Okay, definitely mess something up. Um, let's just focus on the players. Where do we loop over the players? Here. So it might actually need to be minus CY. At this point, I'm just going to be like doing guess and checking. I don't know if this is right. Might have to like swap one of the things. All right, let's try this out. All right, so also, also we have to, this thing is kind of off shifting our camera by 100 and, what was this? This was like 140. So we might have to shift the X by 140, kind of a hacky thing to do. Oh, I need to add 140. Is that centered? That looks pretty good. Uh, camera logic. And I got another spam bot in this chat. So let's go ahead and block this person. I'd use her on this channel. Uh, what we're doing right now is I just added the ability for a camera. So you notice locally, like as I move around, I have a camera focused on my player. It's all about just like basically offsetting every object that's rendered by a certain X and a Y. Focus on where your current player is. And then I also increase the tick rate of the server by 10 to hopefully make it be a little bit more smoother. But at the end of the day, like you have to do a real type of interpolation to make this game smooth. So there's really nothing you can kind of do about that until you really add a bunch of complex logic with interpolation. Well, I don't know if it's that complex. It's just something I had to go look up. All right. So now we have Oh, I see. If you fall off and then you can jump, that's, that's the bug you guys were talking about. Give me that coin. Yeah, so someone said I should probably make some sound effects. So when you jump, we can make a sound effect. And then also when you collect the coin, we could do a sound effect. So free coin sound wave. I don't know if you need wave or OGG or freesound.org. That sounds good. Hopefully it's free. And by free, I mean like Creative Commons free. Log in to download. I don't want to log in. The work is licensed under Attribution 4 license. I don't know what that is. You're free to share, adapt. 
I mean, I'm not making you under the following terms. You must give appropriate credit, provide a link to the license, and indicate if changes are made. Okay, a link to the license. <clears throat> well, how do I give the appropriation? How do I give the credits here? I really have to log in for this. I can use inspect element. What would I be inspecting? Look for an audio tag. Ah, is this it? Hmm. Audio. It's fine, I'll just log in. It's it's not that big of a deal. Create an account. Copy a temp email. Bob Sackett one one two. Go ahead and copy this. Bob Saget. I was doing HTTPS. Oh. Ah, oh, nice. Thank you. So let's download this uh, and put this in my project. Workspace, WebSocket game. I guess it would need to be in the public folder, and I'll just go ahead and paste it in here and call it coin mp3. So locally, thank you so much for pointing that out like I just inspected. That saves me the registration pane. Um, I don't know how to attribute this, honestly. I want to kind of attribute it because I don't want to get in trouble, and I do want to... give back to who made this, but I don't know how to attribute it. Like, I guess I could just put a link in the stream itself. And in the project, I could just put a readme. Coin sound found from that. I don't know. Like, <laughs> is that good enough? But how do I do audio? Because I, I honestly don't know. So JavaScript, how to play audio. And then after this, I might actually wrap it up because it's almost been two hours and 30 minutes. Let's do this. So they're saying that I could have a coin sound here. I haven't done sound in the browser in a long time. I can go ahead and load in coin mp3 and then coin audio. Let's just go ahead and when you pick up a coin. Now the issue is how do you know a coin was picked up? I'd have to look at, I'd have to emit, the server would have to either emit like play coin sound, which maybe that would be kind of annoying. Uh, let's try it out though. So where do we collect the coins? I think that's here. So I'm gonna say IO emit play coin sound. Don't know if this is good, but I'm gonna say socket.on play coin sound. And every time someone picks up a coin, it's just gonna keep on doing this over and over again. And then you can get smart enough and figure out the location of your player and figure out the location of the coin that was picked up and reduce the audio to make it like be lower volume, which might be interesting. Maybe we only want it when you pick it up. 
Hearing other people pick up coins might be kind of annoying. Um, there might be a way to say like if it's already playing. JavaScript check check if audio is already playing and reset. I noticed that I picked up like two coins and it just like, oh wow, that didn't work. Obviously, because of. Can you guys hear that? It'd be so annoying. But let's just commit it. Let's see, play coin sound. I don't know what this DS store is stuff. I'm going to delete that. Add that, commit that, push that. Having the server tell you when to play the sound might be a kind of a bad thing to do. It might be very annoying. When everyone's picking up coins every five seconds, it might just be like blasting coins everywhere. But let's just try it out. I am curious, uh, in the comments, say yes if you want me to continue building on this next stream whenever I do the stream again. Uh, my theme is Material Community High Contrast. So I, I wonder if we just keep on building onto the side scroller and like make it fun. very loud. Yeah, I think there's a way to control volume of the coins. I don't know how to do that though. JS audio control volume. My theme is material community high contrast. It's just volume. I could say coin audio volume is equal to something lower. It's a little bit loud. Yeah, I don't know if we should have it so it plays the audio when anyone picks up a coin or just you. Maybe it makes sense to just make it when we pick up the coin. Um, so maybe I'll do that. So instead of doing IO emit here, I'll just do, I think we do socket map, player socket map, player.ied. So when you pick up, only play the sound for the player who picked up the coin. <clears throat> now you set the volume every time the coin is picked up. Yeah, maybe I should put the volume up here. Like that. Can you just set the property at the start? Yeah, I should. Um, can I do a simple summary of the whole thing? Are you, are you talking about this project we're building right now? Only you. Can you also make it so the first 1 to 20 wins and start a new round? Yeah, we could try doing that. This is going to be the last feature. Um, so when we... Let me turn off my volume. When we get to... So when anyone gets to 20, uh, I'll just go ahead and say like const in-game score is 20. That might be a little bit high for right now. Let's just do 10. And then I'm also going to increase the spawn rate from 1,000, uh, which... Hold on, let me slow down. I'm adding stuff to the wrong file. In game score. This thing needs to be here. And then I think I also have a thousand, so I'll say spawn coin spawn rate. That could be pulled out to a constant up here. And I'm going to set that equal to 500. And then also when you pick up a coin, so 
I don't remember that where that is. Here, when you pick up a coin, I'm going to say if player.score is greater than 20, reset game. Reset game is going to probably just go ahead and just loop over all the players. So four cons player of players, and then I'm just going to reset all of their scores back to zero. Uh, player.x is equal to 100, player.y is equal to 100, and probably their vx and vy needs to be reset back to zero. And then also, yeah, that should be fine. Let me make sure this works. Something just crashed. I think I'm misspelling something. <laughs> Play your socket map player ID. Why would this not be defined? Hold on. I mean, that should be defined. What? Player socket map player ID. Mid is not a function. How would I not have? Okay, hold on. I know I store the ID of the player when they join. So here's the player socket ID. And then I say player socket map of socket ID is equal to player. Oh, duh. This is kind of confusing. I think I need to just make a socket map. Um, and then I can say socket map of socket ID is equal to socket. So I can keep track of that thing somewhere. Probably when they disconnect as well. Whatever. I'll just go ahead and do this. So I'll do just socket map emit. All right, let me go ahead and do end score of one, and I want to make sure that this thing resets us all. There we go. I think this is working. I'll make it 10, and I'm going to push this. So uh, reset game on score 10. Commit this. <clears throat> um, I don't really watch that many Udemy courses, so I can't really give a good recommendation. I know there's someone called Max Amelia who makes some good content, but I haven't really watched his full cor course to know if it's good or not. All right, the overview of this project. Someone wants a quick overview. I have a client in a backend, right? The, the node server, this is using Express and Socket.io to create a socket server, and it's also hosting some static content that's in this public folder. So when you go to localhost 3000, it's hosting this index file, which is going to connect to the backend socket server like this. And then I start just creating a bunch of event listeners on the socket to know when a, the map is updated, when new players are joining, when coins are created, when I should be playing audio, etc. On the front end, I also listen for when the keyboard events are down. So when you press um, D, It'll basically set a control map, and I send that over to the back end. Um, I also draw all the things that are in the server, so like the tiles, the players, the coins, those are drawn in this draw object, or this draw function, where basically I clear the canvas of the UI, and then I redraw all these squares and circles and whatever. Um, and then the loop, basically every request animation frame, it just keeps on updating the page and looping. In fact, I don't know if I even need to have an update function here. And in the back end, 
we basically also have a game tick. So every certain amount of time, it calls a function called tick, which is going to basically move the player based on some velocities and accelerations of gravity. We check if the player has collided with the coin. If it is, we collect the coin, delete the coin, and play a sound and check if the score is over a certain amount and we reset. We also check the controllers. If the player is trying to go up, down, left, or right, we move in the correct direction. We apply some gravity. We check if they're jumping, if they're allowed to jump, and then we make them jump. And then we also reset them back to a starting position if they go out of bounds. And then every tick, we just emit the players and the coins so that all the clients on the server can redraw. And that's it. Boom, just one. All right, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this stream. You guys learned a little bit about JavaScript, WebSockets, um, how to draw some stuff to the canvas. We did a lot of this stream. I'm kind of impressed with this little game that we have. We got a nice little amount of people joining to the same server. It's not as slow as it was last time because we kind of IP limited everyone so that they can't crash our server by just joining over and over again. Um, but yeah, go ahead and leave a comment again. If you want me to continue building on this same game, maybe we can just keep on adding features. Leave a comment, let me know. Or if you want me to go back to my normal TRPC React stuff, let me know as well. Um, maybe we can actually make this like a, a zombie survival. And this, that's something I wanted to do. Like one person starts as a zombie and has to go around killing the other players. And once you get killed, you spawn back as a zombie. So I think that would be a cool game mode that we can try to implement next stream, maybe. Um, other than collecting coins, because I mean, it's cool, but like, what's the point of this? You know what I'm saying? So making it actually like a game mode where you have teams and rounds, I think would be pretty cool to do. Um, I will post a link to this game. It is on my GitHub. It's called uh, WebSocket Game. And more specifically, this is on a branch called Side Scroller. So let me go ahead and push that link. Um, and then we can also maybe, I'll spend some time looking up interpolation to make this feel smoother because depending on where you are in the, in the world, this is probably going to be super laggy for you if you live in like Iran or some other country where you, it takes like 100 or 200 milliseconds just to get to my railway server. So really, this is going to be the most responsive for people who live in the location of this railway app, which I don't know where they host these things, probably East Coast or West Coast. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep playing around with this. This is pretty fun. This thing is deployed here. So I'm actually, you can go and play there. I'll keep it up. Anyone can go in and just start playing around with it. And then also update the description of this channel. Or this video. How do I update the description of the video? Game hosted here. Let me update that. And then code found here. But yeah, there's people in Australia who say this is not laggy. So that's pretty good. Um, and I mean, how many players do we have? We have at least 20 players in the server and it's working pretty well. So that just goes to show that these servers are pretty powerful. I mean, like you don't really need that many resources to host a little game like this. Um, how to display ping for users. Yeah, that might be a pr pretty cool thing to, um, let me put a to do. If you guys have any ideas for next stream, maybe display ping in MS next to users. I want to make a zombie survival round based game. So basically one player spawns as zombie when they hit other players and kill them. Those other players also become zombies. Game ends when everyone is dead. Uh, and then 
humans win if they survive for two minutes or something like that. And then probably make some map rotations. So map rotations, end of every round, every round we get a new map to play with. And then maybe actually draw some better images uh, on the client side so it actually looks a little bit nicer. And that's probably, you know, enough to really get started on this app. I know uh, maybe some refactoring too. Refactoring to improve code. Because right now I'm just shoving everything into a single file. And this is becoming a little bit unmanageable. So we might need to make like a map manager, maybe some type of like, I don't know. I want to keep this functional and not do object-oriented programming. So I don't know how this will evolve over time. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could open this up for contributors. I kind of want to keep this for the stream though, so that people can like build upon the last stream and really like see this progress, see this prog, what am I trying to say? See the project progress over time. But yeah, platforms that move, that might be cool. That might be hard to implement. Yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna add some sprites. Maybe we can do like some cool colors for the the tiles. Uh, maybe we can do some background colors for the actual like map. Um, maybe like a, an apocalyptic 2D background if we can find some cool tiles or images for that. Um, yeah. No, I'm just gonna keep this with Canvas for right now and see how far we can take this. My stream schedule, I try to stream Sunday mornings. So at around 8 a.m. Eastern is when I started this stream. So that's my schedule. And just every week on Sundays I do it. So I'll try to actually like start putting a schedule out on YouTube where people can know where I'm going to stream. Um, give me that coin. And this guy. I'd use your own content. A grappling gun would be pretty cool too, yeah. I don't know how that would fit into the whole like zombie theme. Maybe it'll work out. But anyway, that's all I wanted to do today. So if you guys enjoyed, give me a thumbs up. Join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just get help with any type of programming question. Um, the code, like I said, I put the links in the description of the video so you should be able to see this code. And uh, stay tuned next Sunday around 8 a.m., Eastern, so 8 a.m. Eastern is my typical stream day. And I usually stream for like an hour or two or three hours. But yeah, later, have a good day, happy coding, and uh, see you next time.